NAD+, it fuels several processes that are critical to how we age. However, NAD plus levels decline as we grow older, accelerating the aging process. But there are several steps that you can take to restore those declining NAD plus levels. And that's the topic of today's video. Since I've improved my video production skills in the year and a half since I launched my channel, I've decided that some of my older videos could use refreshing. And this is one of those videos. If you've been with me since the beginning, you might recognize this content. All right, let's dive in. There's a lot of longevity therapies and interventions that are coming down the pike, but are still a few years away. But there are some things that you can do today, right now, to slow the aging process. And one of those things is to boost the sirtuin pathway. Calorie restriction has long been known to extend the lifespans of some species, but the type of calorie restriction that we're talking about is really not sustainable. Enter CR mimetics. These are molecules that mimic the beneficial effects of calorie restriction. And many of these molecules have an impact on the sirtuin levels in your body. Sirtuins are a class of seven different proteins that play a critical role in regulating cellular health. These genes are nicknamed the longevity genes because they regulate many functions that influence the aging process. They regulate mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the creation of new mitochondria, they stimulate apoptosis, or the programmed death of cells, and autophagy, which is the recycling of cellular materials. They inhibit inflammation. They stimulate signaling between the nucleus and the mitochondria on the cellular level, and between the hypothalamus and fat tissue on the systemic level. And three of the sirtuins repair damaged DNA. And sirtuins can only function in the presence of NAD+, which acts as a fuel for the sirtuins. NAD, which stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, is a derivative of nicotinic acid, also known as niacin or vitamin B6. And it comes in two forms, NAD plus and NADH. It's a coenzyme that helps turn nutrients into energy, and it plays an essential role in energy production in the mitochondria. It's also a helper molecule for proteins that regulate other biological activity. Sirtuins can't function normally without NAD+, but it's also used by DNA-repairing proteins called PARPs. Sometimes, when cells divide in preparation to replicate themselves, mutations happen to the DNA. But the body has a control system in place to repair these mutations. Part of that system is proteins called poly-ADP ribose polymerase, or PARPs. And PARPs consume NAD+, just like sirtuins do. Now, although it's necessary to activate many NAD-dependent molecules, such as sirtuins and PARPs, too much activation can exhaust NAD supplies and can induce cell death if the damage is too severe. On a side note, another aspect of that same control system is the protein P53. This protein is responsible for the elimination of carcinogenic cells, but too much activation of P53 can destroy too many cells and can accelerate the aging process. Activation of the PARP enzyme can induce overexpression of P53. As we age, NAD plus levels go into decline and both sirtuins and PARPs become less functional. As NAD levels decline, energy transfer decreases, slowing mitochondrial function and increasing oxidative stress. This results in chronic inflammation, cognitive dysfunction, and an increase in free radicals, which damage DNA. So how do you reverse this decline in NAD plus levels? Well, one way is by supplementing with NAD precursors. Studies have shown that taking an NAD precursor can elevate NAD plus levels by as much as 60%. Now, there are several precursors to NAD with varying levels of absorption and effectiveness. Two of the most effective are NMN, or nicotinamide mononucleotide, and NR, which stands for nicotinamide riboside. Now, there's a lot of debate between which is more effective, which passes through the cell membrane earlier, and the jury still seems to be out on that. However, in numerous studies on both substances, NMN seems to be edging out NR in terms of results. NMN has proven to have superior results in endurance, heart disease, Alzheimer's, aging, DNA repair, weight loss, neurological function, energy, and believe it or not, vision. 
However, both NMN and NR are quite expensive. So another alternative is niacin. But taking niacin in quantities large enough to be effective in restoring NAD plus levels can cause acute skin flushing. And a lot of people don't like to take niacin because of the side effect. Although apparently it diminishes over time as your, as your body becomes used to taking niacin. So niacin can be a cheap alternative to NMN or NR. So a couple caveats. Like I said, taking NMN or NR can be pricey. Typically, both NMN and NR come in doses of 250 to 300 milligrams per day. But most researchers who take NMN themselves recommend taking a gram per day. That's 1000 milligrams. Now I've read articles on NR that suggest a daily dose of 500 to 1000 milligrams. And taking a gram of NMN can run you between 150 and $200 per month. And there's a second caveat to taking NR, NMN, or any form or derivative of niacin. The RDA, the recommended daily allowance for any form of vitamin B6 is 16 milligrams per day with an upper limit of about 35 milligrams per day. If you're taking one gram per day of NMN, that's in excess of 60 times the recommended daily allowance. Taking any form of niacin in excess of 35 milligrams per day, and that includes niacin, niacinamide, nicotinamide, nicotinamide riboside, and nicotinamide mononucleotide, all forms of niacin consume methyl groups in order to be properly excreted in the urine. The lack of methylated niacin metabolites in the urine is a sign of niacin deficiency. And methyl groups are important to a lot of biological functions. They're used in the creation or in the synthesis of creatine, of choline, of neurotransmitters. They're also used in the methylation of DNA. Stealing methyl groups from any of these functions is not a good idea. So if you're taking any of the forms of nicotinamide, you need to get an adequate amount of methyl groups from somewhere else. A good idea is to supplement with trimethylglycine or TMG. A good recommendation is to take TMG in a one-to-one -one ratio with NMN or NR. TMG usually comes in 500 milligram doses. So if you're taking one gram of NMN per day, you should also be taking one gram of TMG per day or two caps. Another thing that you can do is to accelerate your production of sirtuins. And one way to do that is to take resveratrol. Resveratrol is another polyphenol like quercetin and is found primarily in red wine, grape skins, blueberries, and even in dark chocolate. Resveratrol boosts the activity of sirtuins by elevating the mitochondrial function in a way that is similar to calorie restriction. So supplementing with resveratrol has been demonstrated in labs to extend lifespans. But perhaps a better choice would be to supplement with pterostilbene, which is a chemical cousin of resveratrol. Pterostilbene occurs in the same types of plants as resveratrol, but in much smaller amounts. Both resveratrol and pterostilbene are strong anti-inflammatories, both show activity against cancer cells, and both are powerful antioxidants. But in cell cultures and animal studies, pterostilbene often performs better than resveratrol, and it's far more bioavailable than resveratrol. About 20 times as much is absorbed by the body, and it lasts in the body seven times longer than resveratrol. So pterostilbene might be a better choice when it comes to choosing your supplements. Sirtuins, PARPs, and NAD plus are all part of the nutrient sensing pathway, which is one of the pathways associated with the nine hallmarks of aging. If you'd like to know more about this pathway, check out this video that I did on the AMPK pathway. That's it for me, I'm out of here. I'll catch you next time.